Hello friends, myself Praveen Gore, lecturer science department. So, in previous lectures, I have covered the properties of solids and in the, in the previous lecture, last lecture, I have started with properties of liquid. So now, we will be moving on with properties of liquid. So what in this we have, what is capillarity, then we have applications of capillarity, then what is the term viscosity or what is the property of viscosity. Then we'll study applications of viscosity and then we'll study two types of flows, streamline and turbulent flow. So let's see what is capillarity. So capillarity, the definition of capillarity is the rise or fall in liquid level inside the capillary tube due to surface tension is called capillarity. What is capillarity? The rise or fall of liquid level inside capillary tube and that rise or fall is due to surface tension. So, we know what is surface tension, we will see what is capillarity. See here, in the first diagram, you can see here that in diagram A, water surface is at one length or at one point outside the capillary tube. Capillary tube is nothing but a hollow glass tube. When we insert that hollow glass tube inside water, what happens? There is rise in the liquid level only inside capillary tube. The rise is only inside capillary tube. There is rise or fall. For, for water, we have only rise inside only capillary tube, which is due to surface tension. So, why is that rise for water and sometimes there is fall in the level. So, the rise is for liquids which wet the glass surface. Which wet the glass surface. Water sticks to the glass surface. Therefore, what we see inside capillary tube is little bit rise in the liquid level. So, in the same manner, if you see the diagram B, what you can see here is, inside liquid B, there is fall in the liquid level. There is fall in the liquid level and that fall is due to, we are using the substance mercury which does not wet the glass surface. It does not stick to the glass surface. Mercury slides away. It does not stick on the glass surface. Therefore, these processes are taking place due to surface tension, the rise or fall in the liquid level. The rise or fall is taking place only inside capillary tube. If you see in the real life, immerse a capillary tube, immerse a hollow glass tube inside water. What happens if you are inserting in it in water, the water level only inside capillary rises than it is on the outside the capillary. If you see outside the capillary, the rise uh, level will be same, but only inside capillary the level rises. Then we'll see what are the applications of capillarity. Okay, so what happens inside plants? We can see the water as well as sap rises in the plants. Where do we put water to the plant? When we are watering the plants, we put it at the bottom. And how it reaches to all the branches and the leaves? It, the rise of sap and water inside plants is due to capillary action because there are pores inside trees or plants. Those pores act as capillary tube and due to which what happens in, through those capillary tubes, water or sap rises to all the parts of the tree or plant. Okay, Same thing happens when the candle burns. When candle burns, the molten wax rises up through wick and there it burns. So, what happens? We have all seen the phenomenon of burning of a candle. When candle burns, wax is melted. Wax is melted. So, what happens? And we have a wick. That wick acts like a capillary tube. The wick acts like a capillary tube. Molten wax is liquid. Therefore, that liquid rises through that capillary, which is nothing but wick. So, molten wax rises up through capillary and there it is burning. Then you have one more example, the flow of ink through nib is due to capillarity. So all of we might have used ink pens, there we can see in the nib we have one slight hole, one slight gap between the nib. So what happens, what that gap is, that gap acts as capillary, that gap acts as capillary tube and through that capillary ink flows and we can write it on the paper okay so the flow of ink through nib is due to 
capillary these are the applications of capillarity then we have one more property called as viscosity so what is viscosity it is the property of the liquid due to which it opposes the relative motion between its different layers so you will not understand it by the first meaning i will explain it with a diagram suppose this is ground and we have liquid layers flowing on it we have different liquid levels so this is layer layer 1 this is layer 2 this is layer 3 and this is layer 4 so what we feel is all the layers are moving with same speed what we feel if we don't know the science behind it we feel that if the liquid is flowing all the layers layer 1 2 3 4 they move with same velocity but it is not the case if you look closely at the liquid flow layer 1 has different velocity layer 2 has different velocity layer 3 has different velocity layer 4 has different velocity so they are moving with different velocities so velocity of layer layer 1 is little less layer velocity of layer 2 is little more and velocity of layer 3 is little more as compared to 1 and 2 velocity of layer 4 will be highest as compared to layer 1 2 and 3 so what happens velocities increase so what happens if you see at one point of time all the particles are at same line all the particles are at same time but if you see after certain time say t is equal to 5 seconds t is equal to 5 seconds in layer 1 you will find the particle here in layer 2 you will find the particle little ahead layer 3 you will find find the particle little more ahead and layer 4 you find the particle little further more ahead why is that because layer 1 has slow low velocity layer 2 has little more velocity layer 3 has more velocity so in the same manner what happens the particles move according to the velocity so what does viscous force does the viscous force tries to reduce the relative motion it reduces the velocity gap between different layers there is some velocity gap between layer 1 and 2 2 and 3 3 and 4 all that they all that all those gaps are reduced due to viscosity then what is the effect of temperature on viscosity what is the effect of temperature on viscosity so how to say when the viscosity is more and when viscosity is less so one generalization i'll give when the liquid is thick when the liquid is thick we say viscosity is high when the liquid is thick the viscosity is high and when when the liquid is thin viscosity is less so this gives a general idea regarding what is viscosity more viscosity liquid will be thick so effect of temperature on viscosity let us take the example of simple daily life example okay we have oil oil is little bit thick so what does it mean it means oil has little extra little high viscosity little high viscosity when we pour the oil in a frying pan and heat it what happens the oil becomes thin the oil becomes thin so initially oil was thick when we gave heat when we increase the temperature what happens oil became thin so therefore what is the effect of temperature as the temperature increases the viscosity decreases this is the effect of temperature on viscosity and what are applications of viscosity so there are few given here see liquids of high viscosity are used in shock absorbers and buffers of chains liquids of high viscosity are used in shock absorbers and buffers of chains buffers of trains so what are buffers of trains when we have two coaches joined of a train in the middle portion of those we have two metallic parts so what happens when the front coach stops the coach behind it it suddenly comes and what happens it gives a bang so to reduce that shock what we use we use a buffer solution which is a thick liquid so what happens whatever the impact the maximum of the impact is absorbed by the thick liquid buffer buffer solution and little bit is given to the next metal so in between two metals we have high thick liquid 
which acts as buffer solutions and also in case of shock absorbers we have liquids inside shock absorbers bike shock absorbers to be precise we have liquids inside those so whatever the shock is gained by the bike the maximum of the shock will be absorbed by the liquid then choice of lubricants is made according to different seasons why is that because lubricants they are used to reduce friction they are used to reduce friction so what happens if you are using lubricants according to different seasons it is a very beneficial method why because if you are talking about uh, a thick liquid if you are talking about a thick liquid so more thick liquid will be used during summer season why because heat will be more and it tries to reduce viscosity and less thick liquid will be used during winter seasons because heat will be less again one more thing third point is to reduce the viscous force of air and water vehicles are streamlined to reduce the friction vehicles are streamlined so aeroplanes as well as cars bikes if you see sports bikes and all you might have seen that the faces are streamlined okay they are in a triangular kind of shape even in the aeroplanes why is that because they cut through the different layers of <clears throat> different layers of air or water see here example i'll give these are layers of water and if you see a shape it will always be in this shape the shape of the front side of the ship will be this so what happens this front side this front side what happens it doesn't push the layers but rather it cuts through the layers and the friction the opposition occur uh, offered will be very very less therefore when we know what is viscosity we can streamline the vehicles and friction offered will be very very less then we have two kinds of liquid flows one is streamline flow another is turbulent flow so let us study the definitions streamline flow the flow of a liquid is said to be streamline if all the liquid particles that pass a point follow the same path with same speed so how it is let's see here we have a liquid flow we have a liquid flow so what happens i say this liquid flow is streamlined i say this liquid flow is streamlined so according to definition i'll consider one point here okay and we have different water molecules this water molecule number 1 and 2 water molecule 1 comes at this point and it goes in this direction it goes in this direction with say certain velocity 5 meter per second 5 meter per second molecule number 2 comes at this point and this also goes in the same direction with same speed so what happens all the particles coming at this point are moving in the same direction with same speed then i say this total flow is streamline flow okay then we have turbulent flow the flow of a liquid is said to be turbulent if the speed and direction of the particles passing through the point changes with time so let us take the example of a flow here i'm taking a flow here what liquid is flowing i'll consider this point i have to see i have to study the particles passing through this point so what happens we have particle liquid particle 1 liquid particle 2 okay so liquid particle 1 comes here at this point and from this point it goes in this direction with say speed 6 meter per second the liquid particle 1 is going in this direction with 6 meter per second liquid 2 comes here it goes in this direction with 7 meter per second so what happens the direction is changing the speed is changing with time therefore this entire flow i'll call it as turbulent flow so example for streamline is water flowing through pipelines water flow flowing through 
pipelines and example for turbulent is example for turbulent is water near waterfalls there the motion the flow of the water is irregular so these are the properties of liquids and we'll be studying few more things in the next lecture thank you